folks, my name's Matt, and today we're going to talk about integrating XState with form libraries. And I'm going to show you a way that I like to do it. This was a question that was asked today on our Discord, and this is a kind of new thing I'm doing, which I answer questions that people actually ask us. So let's talk about how to integrate XState with form libraries. And for this, we're going to use something called React Hook Form. This is a library that kind of gives you a form here. So it gives you this hook called useForm, and this form method, which gives you a few different properties. You can handle submit on form elements here. This is in a React application. You can register inputs. So you can register kind of this email input and you can register this name input and they kind of save it into the form as you go and it handles a load of stuff like validation for you, um, submitting for you. It kind of does a lot really. And what I've done is I've said, okay, when this form is submitted, I want to alert the values in a kind of JSON stringified format because it gives you the values back, in this case, email and name in an object. And so let's see that working. You can see I can have email up here. So uh, pocock at me.com and Matt Pocock, and I can submit and then it alerts us with the values here. Now, a lot of people kind of have questions about this when it comes to X state, which is how would I involve X state in this situation? Like when is X state useful here? So let's create a very simple machine. We're going to go constant machine equals create machine. And for this, why not? Let's use the visual editor. And whoops, I just need to sign it stately. Two seconds. Okay, got our visual editor set up. And I'm going to make this a form uh, machine. And let's say we've got an initial state, which is going to be the um, kind of collecting form data. And let's imagine that we need to submit this form data and kind of do something with it. So we're going to go into submitting state. Now, this submitting state, it's probably going to have an invoke in it. So we can say invoke source uh, submit form. And that's now working. So how do we then get from the collecting form data state to the submitting state? Well, for this, like if you imagine this, you could do like a few things here. You could have like an event going back to it, which would be like on change. So for instance, this would like you would provide this sort of change. Uh, like every time the inputs were changed, you would like save the form data or things like that. You might even have events like uh, blur, for instance, if you wanted to check like validation. But here, if we keep doing this, it feels like, you know, you would obviously have focus as well, for instance. Like it feels like we're just implementing or re-implementing um, all the stuff that React hook form gives us. You know, you just get to a point where you're just saying, okay, I want to do this and this and this, and all of these things are already handled by a library that's well tested, that's, you know, that's a um, industry standard at this point. So why would you then go and re-implement this in X state? And you'd have to do it for every single form you create too. So what I like to do is I like to kind of let, kind of be really clear about the boundaries of what I'm using each library for. React hook form, I'm going to say, is going to handle all my focus events, all my change events, all my blur events. I'm going to make a seam around React hook form. And the only thing that I care about from React hook form is going to be the submit event. So let's take all that, put that in there, and I'm going to say, when I submit, I'm going to have all of my data valid. Now, this is really useful for when you have just very basic validation. So for instance, if I pull this my face over here, and whoops, uh, I'm going to add some validation here. And this validation will look like this. It will say uh, validate uh, value, thank you, copilot, and return value dot, um, let's say value dot length is greater than zero. And if it is actually, or rather I should say, if value dot length equals zero, so if they've provided like an empty string, then what we're going to do is we're going to return um, email is required. Perfect. So we can do the same thing on name, for instance, but you get the idea. Now, again, what's going to happen there is react hook form. And in fact, let me let me show you this working. I'll just write a little bit more code. Okay, I've written a little bit more code. Um, I'm just said if the form kind of if there is an error from the email field, then I'm going to display the error message. And what this looks like is if I just leave that empty, email is required submit, like it's not going to let me submit it. So this means I can do all of this validation in a really nice kind of like idiomatic way uh, that I don't need to care about it. And that means that when I get to my submit event, I know that my form is valid, which is wonderful. If I need to do more complicated stuff here, then I can start to involve X state more. 
For instance, let's say that I need to kind of check with an external API to see if the email form is uh, valid, for instance. What I can do then is I can say kind of, um, I can, I'm not gonna code it out here, but I could say if, for instance, every time this changes, I'm gonna let my form know about it via a, uh, email changed event, or for instance, email changed. And every time that happens, for instance, we might have like a substate inside here. And in fact, let me just code this up and then I'll show you. Okay, so I've built a simple state machine for handling kind of checking the email validity. Now, what happens here is we're in the collecting form data state. And if I simulate this, and we're kind of, well, we start in the email invalid state, which actually I didn't want. Yeah, uh, let's see, this should be email invalid. Give me two seconds. Yep, we should start in the checking email state. So whatever kind of value that we know about the email, like uh, whatever input they've added, then we should check that. If the email is invalid, then we go back to the, we go to this email invalid state, at which point we can show an error. Or if the email changes again and we go to email is valid, then the email is valid and we can submit the form. So there we go. We get the sense of kind of um, how to integrate this with XState. And you can imagine this sort of building in, in complexity and the seams are still really, really clear, which is React Hook form is handling some parts of our form and XState is handling some other parts. That means it really, really um, makes sense to integrate this at a deep level only when you need to. And you can still maintain a clear boundary over what's handling what. And XState sort of sits above your form library kind of as a, a collaboration tool, as an orchestrator to say, this is truly what's happening. And it kind of delegates the, uh, the menial stuff, the boring stuff to React Hook form. So, there you go. Hopefully that gives you a sort of clearer idea of how to integrate uh, form libraries, uh, whether they're in React or Vue or Svelte or whatever, and XState. So thanks for your time, and I'll see you in the next one.